Welcome back. If you just joined us to watch the news at 10, broadcasting on channels television live from Lagos, a reminder of our top stories. Esil Ruru returns to Bayelsa State in the company of her mother after undergoing medical tests at the Police Gender and Child Care Protection Unit in Abuja. Security beefed up at Babington Macaulay Junior Seminary as Lagos State Government promises speedy action on the rescue of kidnapped students. President Buhari holds talks with his Turkish counterpart, pledges not to lose focus in the fight against terror. A NATO commander in Europe accuses Russia and Syria of deliberately using migration as a tool to destabilize Europe. You can read up more on our top stories. They're on our websites, channelstv.com and on youtube.com slash channelsweb. You can also visit m.channelstv.com to view us live on a mobile device and download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. And we encourage you to please interact with the channel eyewitness feature in the Channels TV app. If you have pictures or videos you'd like to share with us, please tap the application on your device Swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. Airtel, the smartphone network. We do have a few pictures you sent into our eyewitness portal. Let's begin with this one from Grace Bill Road in Eketz. In Akwaibom State, when a man, whom our eyewitness reporter alleges was electrocuted when trying to vandalize the armored cable of a transformer. Next is this photo from Afaha Itam Itu, local government area of Akwaibom State, showing a flooded street. Our eyewitness reporter says a flood came following the first rains in the town. He wants the government to fix the drainages there to forestall recurrence during the rainy season. Our next picture is from Eloring, the Kwara State Capital, showing people waiting to get water from a tanker. An eyewitness reporter says this is due to water scarcity in the area. He wants relevant authorities to provide them with water and other basic social amenities. Our journey takes us to Ikbaja area in Lagos, where a picture we have shows people whom our eyewitness reporter says were parents who came to pick their awards from the ongoing University Matriculations Examination Center when the exercise extended till 11.30 p.m. Uh, we do apologize. That was a picture from Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, showing a long fuel queue. And uh, also another fuel queue here in Lagos is Surreal area. A lot of people have experienced in that in the country recently. The smartphone network. To another story of a kidnap here in Lagos State. The police command is hopeful it will catch up with and apprehend gunmen who abducted three female students from the Babington Macaulay Junior Seminary in Ikorudu on Monday night. The deputy governor of the state and the commissioner of police on separate visits to the school gave this assurance that all is being done to rescue the students. Our correspondent, Mary Alale Yusuf, reports. Security has been beefed up at the Babington Macaulay Junior Seminary since armed abductors made their way with three girls and calm has returned to the school. Not yet two full days and the Deputy Governor of Lagos State visits the premises to take a look at the situation. The principal of the school, Venerable Olauluwa Adeyemi, gives an account of the events. That is treating very drones sporadically and it was a very big um, issue. Um, the security in school tried to you know, combat them, but um, the weapons they came with were very, very heavy. The deputy governor gives assurance that the police are handling the situation. We assure you and all the general public that we combine their efforts of all the security agencies that the children in particular so called will be rescued very, very, very soon. She is then conducted around the premises. 
Shortly after, the commissioner of police is on the grounds and enters a closed-door meeting with the principal. Abductions like this are strange in Lagos, and the atmosphere here is of shock and worry. But the commissioner of police offers a reassuring word. Wait for his Sussex story. The local vigilante also make an appearance. With the combination of the police, security agents and the local vigilante, the prayer and hope of Nigerians is that the missing girls will soon be rescued. Mary Alale Yusuf, Channels Television News. The House of Representatives is urging the Inspector General of Police to intensify efforts at ensuring that the three girls abducted are rescued. The resolution by the House follows a motion filed, a motion of urgent public importance, so sponsored by Representative Baba, Bab Jimmy Benson. As speaking on the motion, lawmakers say they're worried about the growing number of girls and women being kidnapped in the country. The House further notes that the school owned by the Anglican Communion, Lagos Diocese, is located at Agbufoye, Lugbusi town, Ikorodu. Alarm that more than 24 hours after the sad incidents, the Nigerian police force and other concerned agencies of government have not been able to re reunite the abducted girls with their parents. Further worry that the incidents of insecurity in Ikorodu federal constituency is becoming worrisome as the security agencies of government are finding it difficult to protect lives and properties in the said constituency. The House resolves to condemn in its entirety the callous and grossly inhuman action of the abductors under whatever guise, and it is against the tenet of seeking qualitative education for the girl child. Now in other news, the president has reaffirmed his administration will not be demoralized by the activities of terrorists in the northeast. President Mohammed Buhari said this at a joint press conference held with the Turkish president, Recep Erdogan, who is on a working visit to Nigeria. The president thanked Turkey for identifying with Nigeria at all times, especially now that terror has become a global issue. Our correspondent, Chukuma Onekwesi, reports. The Turkish president is ushered into the presidential villa with full presidential accompaniment set out for him by the host president. He also inspects the presidential guards of honor Brief introduction of Nigerian government officials. And they retire into the president's office for bilateral talks that lasted for over two hours. The bilateral talks also featured the signing of MOUs covering some key areas, including cooperation in trade, the economy, military, and culture. The Turkish president speaks through an interpreter, eulogizing Nigeria as a global actor in so many areas, including security. Nigeria is one out of the numerous countries visited by the Turkish president to deepen what he calls strategic partnership. And State House correspondents could not let him go without explaining what this entails and why this trip is coming now. Currently, Turkey has high-level strate uh, strategic council agreements with 20 countries, and we hope to be able to draw up yet another one of these with Nigeria in this part of the world. We have a lot of similarities between our two countries. In political, military, educational, trade, and cultural areas, our ministers can work jointly. On his part, President Buhari is grateful to Turkey for the support in the fight against Boko Haram. He says he stands by his resolve to develop the country bearing all odds. We thank uh, Turkey very much for the training they have given us to our police and the equipment we receive from them, quality equipment from them. If the terrorists can hold a developed country's capital, 
who are there and killed more than 130 people, what happened in Paris, it shows how vulnerable the less developed countries we are. We will refuse to be demoralized. We will maintain focus in terms of developing our countries, creating jobs for our people, and maintaining security. In pursuit of your Excellency, we welcome you to Nigeria, and we thank you very much for identifying with us through our difficult time and your intention to invest in Nigeria and to get Nigeria to invest in Turkey. The Nigerian president thanks Turkey for identifying with Nigeria at all times and the efforts to get Nigerians to invest in Turkey in the same way Turkish businessmen seem to have embraced Nigeria over the years, dating back to the early 60s. Chukuma Onwekuse, Channel Television News. We'll remain in Abuja now where Linda Kibe has more on the news at 10. Hi, Linda. Hello Amarachi, thank you for joining us and welcome to the nation's capital. The recent killings in Nagatu local government area of Benue State is attracting the attention of Benue indigenous resident in the federal capital territory. Some Idomas are appealing to the federal government to urgently address the crisis. Addressing journalist Nabuja shortly after gathering round the Unity Fountain, the spokesman of the Idomas in Abuja says the attacks must be stopped immediately. Idomas are on the street of Abuja are uh, demanding for justice in Agatu. It's not just Agatu affairs, Idoma affairs. The entire Idoma race is in danger. Nitoma, Idoma has contributed so much to the growth of Nigeria, contributed greatly in, uh, in the unity of Nigeria. And today, um, that greatness is in danger. That's why we are here uh, shouting and crying uh, that the government of the day should do something. That Agatu people are dying, mothers are dying, home is homeless, uh, no farmlands. We are farmers and we are uh, uh, fishermen. Now, they are not, we are not there. We are now. Um, uh, able men have been reduced to IDPs uh, spread across the, uh, the state. It's very pathetic. So the situation of Agatu, we are calling the federal government, we are calling the international community to come to our aid. Agatu is bleeding. And we don't know after Agatu, where next it will go. The federal High Court in Abuja has remanded the former Minister of Interior, Mr. Abba Moro, in custody. He is to remain at the Kujay prison. Justice Anwuli Chikiri fixed Thursday, the 3rd of March, for ruling on the bail application filed by the former minister and two others who are standing trial for the March 15, 2014 recruitment exercise by the Nigeria Immigration Service, which led to the death of 20 Nigerians. At the resumed hearing of the bail application, lawyers to the accused persons told the court that the offence for which the accused persons are standing trial is ordinarily bailable. The prosecutor, however, opposed the bail application on the grounds that the reasons adduced by the defence lawyers is not cogent enough. Unfortunately, today the three applications for bail were heard by the Honourable Judge and uh, speaking for the second defendant, uh, application was duly argued and uh, we had the opportunity of showing to the court the letter that transferred that from the ministry even before the implementation of this e uh, pro project. So this uh, motion for bail has been heard and adjourned for ruling tomorrow and luckily again for her the administrative bail that was extended on Monday was also extended to cover her until the ruling is delivered. So we are very happy. Meanwhile, the trial of the former chairman of Dark Communications PLC, Mr. Raymond Dokwesi, on six counts of money laundering and other charges relating to procurement fraud has been stalled. At the resumed trial in Abuja, the defense team argued against the commencement of trial on the grounds that the proof of evidence supplied by the prosecutor was not properly presented before the court. The prosecutor, Mr. Rotimi Jacobs, informed the court that he will make a clean and clear copy of the proof of evidence available to the defense team before the next adjourned date. Justice John Soho subsequently adjourned the case 
to the 28th and 29th of March for trial. One of Mr. Dopesi's counsels, Michael Zekomi, speaks on the trial. In view of the fact that there were so many things left undone, for example, the proof of evidence that was served on us was not legible enough for the defense to read, for us to be able to read, to apprehend what was going on. And we told the court that it was perhaps better that the statements made by the witnesses uh, be typed out so that we could read them. And where after a lot of arguments to and fro, uh, the prosecution finally said they will make available to us more legible versions of the documents so that the trial could go on. Now, still on legal matters, a federal high court sitting in Lagos has allowed senior advocate of Nigeria, Riki Tafa, to file additional evidence in support of his fundamental rights enforcement suit against the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Justice Mohamed Idris said the EFCC will suffer no injury if Mr. Tafa's further and better fit of it was allowed, stressing that it will better serve the interest of justice to allow the document. Mr. Tafa had filed the ad additional evidence in opposition to an allegation by the EFCC that he offered a bribe of 225,000 naira to Justice Mohamed Yunusa of the Federal High Court. In the fresh evidence, however, a former member of the senior advocate's law firm, one Mohamed Awal Yunisa, claimed to be the owner of an Access Bank account which the EFCC had alleged belongs to Justice Yunisa. The lawyer had earlier admitted that he and some friends donated the money to the judge for the burial of his father-in-law. The EFCC's counsel, Wahab Shitu, had opposed the fresh evidence, insisting it was an afterthought. Justice Idris has, however, ruled in Mr. Tafa's favor on the grounds that a party should be allowed to bring any evidence or material that would aid his case. Hearing of the application has been fixed for Thursday, March 3rd. The National Judicial Council has barred Justice Rita Ofili Ajumogobia from being elevated to the appellate court until her retirement from the bench over alleged misconduct and injustice in the pre-election case she handled in Ogun State. The council also placed the judge on its watch list for the next four years. A statement by spokesman for the National Council, Mr. Sojioye, says the council under the chairmanship of Justice Mahmoud Mohammed took the decision at his meeting late last month. The decision followed a petition written against her by one Victoria Yeni alleging misconduct and injustice on the part of a judge for failing to deliver judgment in a pre-election case between her and Olushola Shonuga and two others. And that's all from Abuja. Back to you, Amarachi. Thanks a lot, Linda. And uh, when the news of 10 returns, the uh, federal government promises to work towards eliminating obstacles preventing foreign investors from coming to the country. More in business news. Please stay with us.